Hello, my friends, hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor. And it's the end of the month, so it's time for my wrap-up, my May wrap-up. And in May, I took part in a reading event called Horror Mayhem, created by the bookish Bryants, which was all about getting you to read more horror. So, well, you don't have to twist my arm to get me to read more horror. So I read a lot of horror this month. And let's get into it. Let's talk about what I read in May. So I've already talked about some of this stuff in different videos, so I'm just going to go right through it. The first week of Horror Mayhem, all the weeks had a theme to them. And the first week was supernatural creatures or uh, monsters. So supernatural beings or monsters. And my favorite creature is the werewolf. So I decided to read a couple of werewolf books. I read this one, The Werewolf of Paris by Guy Endor, a 1933 novel, which has become kind of a werewolf classic. It's not a classic in the sense that Dracula is a vampire classic. It's not at that level, but it is kind of a werewolf classic at this point. And the werewolf in this is really interesting and really savage. It doesn't mess around, the werewolf in this book, the werewolf of Paris. And this book was pretty ahead of its time in its way, in its frank depiction of sexuality and perversion and gore and just all around horribleness. Some terrible things happen in this book, The Werewolf of Paris. The pacing is a little off here and there. Some of the things Guy and Dor chose to focus on in different, in different parts of the book seemed like odd choices to me, but, you know, overall it works. It's a pretty pretty good book and an excellent werewolf novel. And definitely, if you're interested in the horror genre, you owe yourself uh, to check this book out. So yeah, I read that. And after that, I read another werewolf book, a werewolf book I liked even more than The Werewolf of Paris. And that's this one. This is The Forsaken Boy by Troy Trada. Really enjoyed this novel. This is kind of a classic creature feature story. It has everything in it that you expect in a classic creature feature. But with a heavy focus on character. And the character work in this novel is excellent. All the characters are very well fleshed out, except possibly for a couple of villains. And they're just so villainous that you just want them to get eaten by a werewolf. And you know, that, that might have happened in this book. So yeah. The Forsaken Boy by Troy Tradeup, excellent werewolf novel, really enjoyed it. And after that, I still had some time during that week. And there was a, a book that I had picked up that I had wanted to read for a while. And that is this one. This is Demons by Daylight by Ramsey Campbell, his classic collection of short horror stories. So classic indeed that S.T. Joshi, the editor of many Penguin classics, uh, like the H.P. Lovecraft books that Penguin published, Algernon Blackwood, uh, a bunch of other horror, writer, horror writers that are in Penguin classics. S.T. Joshi wanted this to be a Penguin classic and tried to talk Penguin into publishing this as a Penguin classic, but I guess it didn't happen since it's, since it's not a Penguin classic. But maybe it should be because these are really good stories Really interesting stories. The way they were written was interesting. Very urban-centered supernatural stories for the most part. Some of the descriptions in this are a little odd. Some of the descriptions in this are so oblique and strange that I had a hard time figuring out what was going on sometimes. And I think that was probably on purpose to uh, keep, you, keep you off balance a little bit. And, you know, some of the stuff in here is just so British that I had a hard time figuring out what was going on. Very British book. Demons by Daylight. Excellent book, though. I'm developing an appreciation for this writer, Ramsey Campbell, that I didn't have previously. And I enjoyed this one. So I do recommend Demons by Daylight. If you're a horror fan, it's worth checking out. I should mention that I've noticed there is an ebook version of this that you can get for the Kindle. And I... And I picked it up and I noticed that the table of contents is different in the ebook uh, 
because this is the original version of the of the short story collection and there are stories in this that are not in the ebook version and there's at least one story in the ebook version that's not in this so I'm not sure why the change was made. I don't know if it was Ramsey Campbell's choice or if it was just a choice made because by the editors because of rights issues. That's probably why. But I should point it out. If you get the ebook of this, it's going to be different than the original version. Probably worthwhile to hunt down the original version if you can get it. So the week after the Supernatural Week was the Gothic Horror Week, the week where we read Gothic Horrors. And for that, I chose this one, Haunted Castles by Ray Russell, The Complete Gothic Stories of Ray Russell. Really enjoyed this one. This one was excellent. I did a, peng a penguin, a Sunday Penguin video on this one because this is a Penguin Classics. This is the Penguin Horror Classics edition, uh, one of their Penguin Horror line. They had a few, a few books in this series. There is a regular Black Spine Classics of this that you can get, and I do recommend you get it and read it because these are great gothic horror stories. Uh, a lot of them have a classic feel to them, but, you know, with a dose of, you know, modern sexual perversion. You always want some of that in, in your stories if you can get it. And boy, do you get it in here. So, yeah, Haunted Castles, excellent, excellent series of stories in this book. Uh, Ray Russell has another Penguin classic. Um, what was it? I The name escapes me, his other Penguin classic. I'm completely blanking out on the name. Case Against Satan. The Case Against Satan. I think that was the name. And that's another Penguin classic that's available that I have not read yet. He has a bunch of other books that are out of print. Although I've picked up one called Incubus that I'm going to be reading uh, fairly soon. But yeah, this one's excellent. Haunted Castles. But I still had time during Gothic Week to read something else. So I read this. This is The Dracula Tape by Fred Saberhagen. This is cool because this is Dracula's side of the story. It re recounts the events that happened in the original Dracula novel only from Dracula's point of view. And wouldn't you know it, he was innocent the whole time. That Van Helsing, man, what a bad guy. So, yeah, this is all told from Dracula's perspective, where he just goes on and on about how innocent he is. And, yeah, it's not convincing at all. Dracula's totally lying all the time in this book. But it was really entertaining, a really entertaining book. And you know it's gothic, because it's got a big castle in the back. That's, that's how you know. There's a big castle or, or house that's spooky looking in the back on the cover. That's, that's how you know it's gothic. I figured that out. So yeah, totally gothic, the Dracula tapes. And Fred Saberhagen wrote a few Dracula books. And this, I think, was his first one. I enjoyed it. This was a good time. Then it was Cosmic Week. Cosmic Week! Now, we mostly know Cosmic Horror from H.P. Lovecraft. I've read every H.P. Lovecraft story several times. And I will read more H.P. Lovecraft in the future because I really really like H.P. Lovecraft's work. But I decided to read something different, other than H.P. Lovecraft. So I read this book, A Lush and Seething Hell by John Horner Jacobs, which I've had lying around for a while. Two tales of cosmic horror, says right there. So two novellas, basically, in this one book kind of a mixed bag, this book. It starts off with an introduction by Chuck Wendig. And if you didn't know any better, just from the introduction alone, you'd think that Chuck Wendig is an insecure 15-year-old boy. So, didn't have the best start, this book. And the first novella, I have to say, it was well written. But the horror elements in the story just didn't work at all. The first novella is called Sea Dreams It Is the Sky. Sea Dreams It Is the Sky, which is about this poet from a South American country, a fictional one, that had become a dictatorship and he had to hightail it out of the country. And if he goes back there, he's in big trouble because the dictator hates him or something. And he, he goes to Spain and he strikes up a friendship with a young teacher in Spain. Now, he decides to go back to this country that he 
kind of was run out of, even though it's super dangerous. And he asks this young teacher to look after his place. Now, why she's there, she finds a manuscript that he wrote about some of his experiences uh, before he left that country. And it recounts how he stumbled upon our old trope, the forbidden manuscript, that's really scary. And you know it's scary because he lists a bunch of scary things in the manuscript. I suppose that's how you know it's scary. And it's supposed to, it's one of those manuscripts, if you read it, you can go insane, I guess. It doesn't really work, like at all. The scary parts in this story, and there are a few that are unnerving, a few that are grotesque. There's lots of torture in this story. But the scary parts have nothing to do with the supernatural parts. The supernatural parts of the story want to be scary, but they're not. And it also has this really awful villain that's supposed to be all menacing, but he's just like straight out of a comic book and he's just not menacing at all. So the first story, Sea Dreams It Is the Sky, just doesn't work at all. It, it might have been a better story if it didn't have a supernatural element in it at all, and it was just a literary story. Because it, the writing is good. The second novella, uh, or short novel, My Heart Struck Sorrow, works a lot better. The supernatural elements in that story do work. They are creepy. There's some creepy stuff in that, in that short novel, and it was so close to being good but it was a little too long for what it was. The ending was, it didn't work for me, the ending. But I must say that the supernatural elements work a lot better in that one. The writing is good. It's just too long. And there's stuff in there that just, you know, didn't need to be there. And this isn't a, sh you know what, if you've got a short novel that seems too long, something's not working. I, I kind of felt that way, even though the creepy parts in that story are really creepy. It's almost worth it, just for the creepy parts in that story. But altogether, Lush and Seething Hell didn't really hit home for me. So, kind of a failure as a cosmic horror book, in my opinion. So I had some time left over, and so I decided to read something a little bit different. Still has horror elements in it, though, definitely. Even though it was basically a, fantasy, uh, a short fantasy novel by Stephen King. I read The Gunslinger. The Dark Tower Book One, which was an excellent introduction to the Dark Tower series. A short introduction, but an excellent introduction. I really liked this book a lot more than I thought I would. I had read it once years and years ago and didn't remember much about it. Really enjoyed it, uh, reading it this month. And I did a whole video on this one, so you can watch it if you like. The Gunslinger. So I read that, which brought me into my final week, which was Folk Horror folk horror. So I got some folk horror in. Uh, the first book I read was basically the only folk, folk horror book really that I read was this one. And this is Weird Woods Tales from the Haunted Forests of Britain, edited by John Miller. I'm going to say it was folk horror because there were folk horror elements in some of these stories. Basically, it's about scary trees and the forests and the haunting supernatural stuff that happens there. So basically, as described, Tales from the Haunted Forests of Britain. Excellent, excellent collection of sh stories. I really enjoyed this. Some of my favorite authors are in here, Algernon Blackwood, Arthur Mackin. And what's nice is that in this anthology, they didn't just choose the same old stories that you always see anthologized. We got some stories that we don't usually see in anthologies from Blackwood or Mackin, or some of the other writers in here. Um, my favorite story in this collection is a story called The Man Who Went Too Far by E.F. Benson. I have a whole book of E.F. Benson sitting right over there, and this makes me think I really need to read that book. I've read a lot of stories by E.F. Benson in different anthologies. They're always good. His stories are always good, and this story, The Man Who Went Too Far, and boy, did he. This story was really good. It had Pan in it. There's Pan now sneaking around. So, you know, that makes it folk horror right there. And really good story. There's some good stuff in this book. Highly recommend this book. Weird Woods, Tales from the Haunted Forests of 
Britain. Uh, thank you once again to the Bookish Report for telling me about this book. He did a video on this book. One more book left. I had I had like a couple days left in the month. So I got to the, my last horror mayhem book. And it was kind of a doozy, this one. This one was Woman in Trouble by R. St. Clair, Regina St. Clair. She doesn't mess around, man, when it comes to horror. She just, she goes there, man. She goes there. Where does she go? She goes that creepy place. Those creepy places you don't expect writers to always go. She's just like, you know, I'm just going to do it. So there's some, there's some creepy stuff going on in Women in Trouble. Women in Trouble, first of all, a great title. You just hope that the book's going to live up to it, right? It does. This is a pretty good book. Uh, it starts off with uh, the story Snowblind. Yeah, Snowblind. A, sh a short novella or a long short story. Snowblind. That has the weakest moment, actually, in the entire collection. There's a twist in Snowblind, which is straight out of Scooby-Doo. And it's just like, you know, you get there and you're like, oh, really? Are you serious? This was going so well. And now this, is this going to have a Scooby-Doo ending? It doesn't. She pulls it back. She pulls it back away from the Scooby-Doo ending. And it, it actually ends pretty well. How does it? Had a moment there where it was like, what? That's ridiculous. But she pulls it back. And I've noticed that a lot of these stories have kind of an over-the-top feel. You know, it feels almost like, at times, the old Tales from the Crypt television show that was based off the EC Comics, Tales from the Crypt. How they had that kind of over-the-top, it's just going to go there kind of feel to it. These stories kind of have that feel. Only in Tales from the Crypt, usually, very often, it was like somebody who kind of deserved what they got, you know? Not so much the case here. Uh, wrong place, wrong time. You know, sometimes that's all it is. And you're, and you're a woman in trouble. Or, you know, there's some men in trouble in this book, too. There's some good stuff in this book. Uh, I enjoyed it. It's quick, a quick read, and you just want to read right through it, just because you want to see what she's going to throw at you next. A uh, little unpredictable, this collection. Uh, my favorite story, actually, uh, was a story called As Mad as Wild Waves, which isn't the craziest story in this, but it's a good one, uh, all about insanity and its effects. It's, that, was a, that, that story impressed me. So this is a fun collection. And it was a really fun way to go out of horror mayhem. So yeah, the mayhem is over. No more mayhem. Now it's on to June on the range. June on the range. Bunch of Western fiction coming up in June. So I hope you join me with that. I have talked way too long. So usually I'll talk about what I'm going to read, but I already did a June on the range final TBR. I'll link it down below just in case you're interested, and I will catch you next time.